brother. Give me your brother David a uh, brother hand. Amen. Glory to God. Let me tell you what I love. I'll take an amen away from any other preacher in the house, but I love when our young people speak because it, it's heartfelt. Amen. It, it's heartfelt. Glory to God. It is based upon what they experienced yesterday. Amen. Amen. What they're going through today. Amen. And they go to the word and they find a scripture to remedy that situation. And hallelujah. And when I look at how David formulated his message from his life experience and how David, how Bob formulated what he was going to say from his life experiences and, and wrapped it up in the word of God and presented it to us. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. What Bishop is teaching us to do with God's word and importance of prayer. Amen. It's been a living, living example before us today. Can we give God praise? Amen. For our young brothers, our young people. For today. Hallelujah. The fight ain't over. It was God's plan anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can't wait to see what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to experience it. Hallelujah. But I'm going to say this real quick. The scripture said, I have not seen his hand and heard. Neither have they entered the hearts of man what God has prepared for them that love him. If you keep on reading and tell you that they had known what was going to happen, they wouldn't have killed Jesus. If they did not, if they had known that he's going to get up on the third day, they wouldn't have done it. So it tells us that what God has for us, it lies in the spirit. Glory to God. What God has for us, we got to get his presence to bring and put it down. What God has for us, we got to get to know Him, to know what His plan is for our lives. Amen. So let's give God praise for the word we received today. Can we all stand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It hasn't manifested. It doesn't mean it's not coming to pass. Hallelujah. God is wonderful at this time. Amen. There may be one. Amen. There may be two. Amen. It could be 10 or 20. Amen. They need a closer walk with God. Amen. You're not proud of the life you're living right now. You're not happy with yourself. You're a matter of fact, the fight that, that Bob was talking about, you're losing that fight. Amen. Wow. Glory to God. The, the plan and purpose that David was talking about, you don't know what that plan or purpose is for your life. So you're falling short of God's glory because of the lifestyle that you're living in. And, and, and with who you hanging out with, as David said, you don't know how he got mixed up with that. And Bob was talking about how he ended up doing this and that. But you right now are in the midst of this and that. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord rescued them. Now it's time for God to rescue you. Hallelujah. So this time the altar is open. Come on down and let's pray together. Amen. Let's seek God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's touch and agree on the same thing. Ask the God to break some stuff off our lives. Hallelujah. Ask the God to break some stuff off so we can continue to grow and go forth and get what he has for us. So this time we invite you to come on down to the altar. If you need to be saved, if you're not saved, amen. He did the college and back. The fight's not over. Yeah. Life, life may be getting tough on you. Uh, maybe you won't think. Maybe you won't do things with your health, uh, school, or financial things, or maybe it look like the enemy is taking over your household or anything. But the fight is not over, man. Right? Just, just keep praying. Just keep pressing. Uh, reading your scripture. See, with me, uh, you know me in school, when I got in trouble, I'm sitting in jail and everything, and, and drinking, and everybody knows that. And they, they, they know, I mean, they don't know that. That, that I was down there getting into it with, with the locals and, and and fighting them basically almost every other week. And, 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 but I was getting off track for a little bit, but thanks to uh, Quran and, and, and my parents and the grandmother uh, sending me text messages and, 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 and scriptures and and the one scripture that, that that always stays with me is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. When it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Amen. And That's right. Amen. Amen. Him, and he shall direct our path. Amen. 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 Amen.
still standing right now. That's what I live by right now, man. And like lately, uh, like I'm happy that my parents they they, they cut off the cable in the house and we got the little string, but I don't really know how to use it right now, so I have no choice but I gotta read a chapter or two now on my day. <laughs> so I have no choice now. Man. That's why I love my parents and, and, and I'm glad they, they know my heart and, and they, they they just there for me and everything and, and, and love my grandmother, I love our weekends, we met her half and how we got this close bond with each other now and I mean we always had it but it's even stronger right now. And, 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 Tyler, how on um, um, General Assembly we took this walk up. We was in Belton with a cross. He said, I heard took that walk about a, I mean, it could have been a five minute walk, but it was about 30, 35 minutes. And we, we sat there and, and she prayed, and prayed for me. And, and I really appreciate that. Vincent and how every day after church, she ain't seen me the last Sunday, and the next Sunday she see me and then her give each other a hug, and then um, she asked me how I'm doing, and, and I appreciate that right there. Uh, over here, I still want to send through the text messages. Uh, I know I got my phone on uh, where it said, what you want to know that I read the message, because, oh uh, yeah, little girls. <laughs> And Michelle and, and, and my cousin uh, Khalil, and them two, man, they the reason why now I just gotta keep on pressing it. And, and, and I'm looking at all the great things that's happening to them and, and, and how. Success is upon both of their lives, and I'm my sister wants to be a doctor, and got my cousin Khalid, she out in Penn State playing basketball, and won the uh, state championship four years straight, and uh, I'm just, man, I'm just home to see what God has planned for me, and uh, Like like the keep said uh, last uh, Sunday, the blood still works and Amen. the do still work. Yes, it does. And, uh, the Lord is working on me right now, man. And I thank uh, all my church family and, and I love y'all and keep praying for me. Cause we got solutions. So I'm there pulling files for uh, for lawyers and and uh, yeah, just lawyers and pulling their files and. And becoming a principal in county firefighter. Uh, I got the fitness test March 12th. I passed the test. So. about the trouble we got in the school and he was sitting in jail, but look at him now. Amen. He's working on the institute and he had to have a, 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 a serious security clearance. Can somebody say grace? Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Can somebody celebrate a grace? Celebrate a grace and worship your God? Yeah. That has given all of us time, change after change after change after change. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Because see where he's at now. Amen. I declare it was 
Amen. I declare sometimes we go through stuff and we don't understand why we're going through or why this happened. But when you look at your life now and you look at where you came from, then you begin like Joseph and understand why God preserved me. Hallelujah. He preserved me through all this. To bring me to where I am right now. Bishop and our co-pastor, Bishop Alvin and co-pastor Agnes Benson, amen. He's another young man that not only just the church has grown up in him. Amen. amen. He just didn't grow up in church, but church has grown up in him. Amen. He's mature. He's a preacher in his own right. Amen. amen. But he will help out anybody that needs anything. Yep. Amen. He's, he's a, he's a, he has a heart for ministry. He has a heart for <laughs> to see people comfortable. Amen. To make sure everybody's okay above himself. Amen. Glory to God. So can we give God praise and thank God and receive Brother David Vincent before us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. goes with my title. His title was The Fight Is Not Over. And my title is It Was All In God's Plan Anyway. Amen. So, God just worked this out today, so I hope somebody gets just to the amen. I'll be coming from Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 through 18. And it reads Exodus 13, chapter 17 through 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistine, although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds, and when they see war, return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. And I read Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 through 18. And when I got out that passage of scripture, it would say, nothing that you have been through will be wasted. When life gets difficult, sometimes God will take us the long and hard way instead of the easy way because God is trying to do a special work in us. The reason why we were going the long way and it felt like nothing was going right, actually, you were actually progressing towards your promised land. When the Israelites, when God took the Israelites around the way, he took the Israelites through the wilderness to the Red Sea. God was preparing them for the battles they would have to face on the way to their promised land, on the way to their blessing. So the reason why you're struggling is because you're getting closer to your breakthrough, you're getting closer to your blessing. You get closer to the victory that God has in store for you. God is trying to do a special work in you. But God has to take you this way so you can get knocked down a couple of times. You can get pushed back a couple of times. But God is right there. God just wants you to know that he is always going to be there. And I was also thinking, I was like, how can we learn to trust in God if everything is easy? God's not going to let everything be easy. 
Because if everything was easy, you wouldn't meet God in the first place. Come on, David. God is trying to prove yourself to him. He's trying to show you who he is in your life. So when, some, when other situations come about, you can say, God, I know you've got my back. God, I trust you. And God is always going to be right there for you. Amen. God took the children of Israel the long way through the wilderness to prepare them for the battles and the issues that they would face. The reason why God took them that way, and I was thinking about it, when you're going through a situation, so how many are praying for something right now? Anybody praying for anything? Because I know I'm praying for a couple of things. And the reason why you pray for it is because you need it. You need something changed in your life. Pretty much God is preparing you for what you've been praying for. So everything that's coming towards you, God is preparing you for what you've been praying for. If you've been praying for a better job, God's preparing you right now. If you've been praying for making the dean's list in school and praying for all this, God's preparing you right now. Whatever you've been praying for, God is preparing you. When it gets hard and when it feels like when you think you can't go on, God is trying to teach you to depend on him and trust in him. He will always provide. You will never go without. God will always provide. But you have to trust and believe that he will. You have to trust and believe that he will. You got to have faith. You got to believe that God is always going to be there. He will always provide for you. God will always provide for you. You will never be without the things that God did in the past. He can always do it again. And when he does it again, he's going to give you double for your trouble. So what you got in the past, God's going to give you more than what you expected in the future. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it promises that God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. God's not going to throw too much at you that you can't handle. If you're handling stuff right now, God knows you can get through it. There's no way about it. God knows you can get through it. And it says, well, beyond what we can bear, God won't give you any more than you can't handle. If you're in a situation right now, you can handle the situation. You want to know why? Because you're not dead yet. You can't give up yet. That's how you know God is real. Amen. But with every temptation, he will always provide a way of escape. He will always provide a way out of the situation. Aren't you glad God brought you out the mess you put yourself into? Well, the same mess that you told the devil is the same mess God's going to take to bring you out of it. I was excited because I put myself in certain situations. I was trying to figure out how I got here or how I got there, how I ended up hanging out with these guys over there and messing with that girl over there. I was trying to figure out how I got in all these certain situations. And I was like, God... I'm glad this just wasn't my last time you telling me I can't help you anymore after this. After this, you on your own, son. I can't. I'm so glad God never told me that. I'm so glad God never gave up on me. I'm so glad God never turned my life all the way around. Because what I think of what could have happened, and what she should have let happen, I can't help but to give God praise. Because we all been through some situations. I've been through a lot of things. I've been to school in Delaware. I tried to get into other schools, and school was difficult for me. But that used to be an insecurity of mine. I used to think I couldn't do school. I used to think I couldn't do college. I used to think I couldn't do all these things. And that was the thoughts that the devil tried to put in my head. And those are insecurities, but the devil can't use those against me anymore. I've overcome every obstacle. So, if you look at those before me, I'm almost finished. And it says, and when things get tough, Spend more time with him. And when I think about getting tough, I remember spending nights at grandma's house. I see all my vets and cousins in the back. When uh, spending nights at grandma's house, we used to get down on our knees at that little gray sofa. And grandma would make you say the Lord's Prayer, and she would make you pray. And when I think of pray, when I think of situations that get tough, I learned that prayer from Mother Vincent, my grandmother. When things get tough, you got to pray a little tougher. When things get tough, you got to pray a little tougher. You got to like, you gotta start decreeing and declaring some things. You got to say, I decree and declare that I will be healed. I will be set free. You got to pray a little tougher. We always talk about the struggle. You got to learn how to praise God through the struggle and watch God break you out of the struggle. Don't just talk about the situation. Praise about the situation. Because it could be worse than what it is. Amen. You got to praise God because it could be worse. There's people that are better off than you sometimes. Yes. As you begin to have challenges in your life, remember that God's grace comes at no cost to you. When you consider what should have happened, but what God's grace didn't allow to happen, you ought to be thankful for it. You ought to be grateful for it for God's grace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And last, when you're going through, you have to pray over your mind. The mind. The mind is a terrible thing to wait. When the devil comes at you, he's going to come through your mind. And when he comes through your mind, he's not going to be dressed up in that nice little red outfit with the tail and the horns. No, no, no. 
He's going to come and discourage you. He's going to tell you that you can't do it, that you can't be delivered, that you can't be healed, that you can't be set free. He's going to tell you all these things that you can't do. He's going to tell you it's too hard for you. It's not going to work out for you. And these sin right here, this is where I got stuck at in my life. Sometimes you get stuck right here because you're discouraged and those dots begin to make you weak. And because of those dots, we can find ourselves not being like Jesus. We get comfortable and we don't want to let go of those dots. We don't want to let go of those things. We don't want to let go because we're so comfortable where the devil's sat us at. You can't get comfortable. Don't don't dwell where you got stuck at. You can't get you can't get comfortable right there because you start you start acting it out. What you put in yourself is going to come out of you. So you got to be careful what you put on the inside. You put discouraging thoughts in your head. You want to go to work? I really don't want this job. You want to know what God's going to do? He's going to take your little job just because you decreed and declared it out of your mouth. You really have to be careful of those things. And you begin to act out your thoughts and never ever get to your promised place in God. Never get in that blessing because you got stuck right there. But what I learned you have to do, you have to say, if it's not your will, Jesus, take that taste out of my mouth. Take it out of my mind. Lord, I don't want it anymore. Take those thoughts out of my mind. Bring me up from it. If you're going through a situation right now, it's not open for you. God is with you. And if you need some scripture to back that whole section up, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. And with that scripture, I came up with this phrase. And it's, uh, you can repeat after me. I think we all should say because I know we're all going through some things. So, Satan, you are a liar. Satan, you are a liar. I will not receive. I will not receive. Or believe your lies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I, I, I also thought about I have these things that I say every morning. It's called a guarantee scripture. A guarantee is a form of promise or assurance. After everything, my favorite verse is Romans 8, 28. For all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. According to his promise, amen. So if you love God, it's going to work out for you. If you have a relationship with God, it's going to work out for you. No matter what you did, God's grace will cover it. No matter how bad it is, God's grace will cover it, amen. And the last thing I have to say is I can't wait to see what God made me be patient for, amen. Glory to God. Can we clap our hands? Amen.